solve quadratic inequalities, we start by trying to solve the normal quadratic by factorising. Then we have to consider the graph and work out whether we're looking above or below the x-axis. So this quadratic inequality, first of all, we need to factorise the left-hand side. Now, given that it's an x squared and a number, that'll be a double bracket. So we'll have our x and our x. And I'm looking here for two numbers which multiply to make minus 3 and which add to make minus 2. So the numbers which multiply to make minus 3 are minus 3 and 1 or minus 1 and 3. They're the only combinations. Now which ones of those also add together to make minus 2? That'll be the top one, minus 3 add 1. And that's what tells me goes in the middle, a minus 3 and an add 1. We're then looking to get the opposites of those answers, as we always do when we solve a quadratic. So our first opposite will be x equals 3, and our second opposite will be x equals minus 1. What we do now is we do a quick sketch of that quadratic graph. So this is a quadratic graph that crosses at 3 and at minus 1. And I want to know where this graph is less than 0. So that is only a very rough sketch. So where it's less than 0 on the graph will be the part where it's underneath the axis, so all of this part here. Now I've only shaded in one part, which tells me I'm looking for one answer. And that is the all the x values between minus 1 and 3. And to write that answer, I will write minus 1 is less than x, which is less than 3. That show me that x is in between minus 1 and 3. I always write it that way round. And as I've only got one region shaded in my answer, I've only got one answer. If I had two answers, or as looking where this, this function was greater than zero, this part up here and here, I'd have two separate answers. But as I've only got one region, I've only got one answer. It's a combined answer. OK, have a go at these two questions. The second one just needs a little bit of rearranging first. The only way to solve any quadratic with an x squared and a number correctly is to have all your items on one side. OK, pause now before the first part of answer A comes up. OK, so start by factorising and then solving and then doing a quick sketch of the graph. Considering are you looking above or below the x-axis? In this one, it's a greater than question, so we're interested in these parts here which are greater than, greater than zero. Look at the graph to decide about your x values. So on the left, we're looking where it's less than minus three, and on the right, where it's greater than five, we need to write those answers down. We've shaded two parts of the graph, so we'll have two separate answers x is less than minus 3, or x is greater than 5. OK, question B, have a go now. OK, here comes the answer. Step 1, rearrange. Step 2, factorise. Step 3, solve. Now a quick sketch of the graph. This time it crosses the x-axis at 4 and 2. Notice that on this question we want to know where is it less than or equal to zero. So again, look at your graph. We're looking at the part underground, which is this part here. I've only got one region, so I'm only going to have one answer. And that's the bit between, my, between two and four. Write down your answer. Two is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to four. Again, Note that as I've only got one region, I've got one combined answer. And also note on this question that I also had the extra inequality symbol less than or equal to, which came in the question, and at every point throughout, 
and they've also been included when I presented my answer to.